Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight with international tempers running hot, it could be easy to go off at the mouth, half-cocked, and declare that the French people and the French nation were just a hapless bunch of water buffalo stuck in the mud, date high, waiting for the safari to arrive with the elephant gun to put them out of their misery. Other people in the media have done that, but I believe it's time to get emotions under control and be a little bit objective. I think tonight calls for objectivity, and we're lucky to have on deck here at Club Buggery in the hot croissant in the boudoir room. <laughs> a man who has performed his Le Petitman style show before the crowned heads of Europe. Now, those who are unfamiliar with Le Petitman's gear, it's a night of backdoor tunes and loody gear, which is very, very French, very, very aromatic and very, very tuneful. Uh, his set included such classics as the love theme from Man and a Woman, uh, Je Regret Rien. Uh, he did uh, a beautiful version of Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir, where he sang the lyric at one end and tr worked the trumpet at the other. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, he obviously has the runs on the board. I remember him climaxing his show one night in France with a terrifically rousing rendition of Je suis un rock star and followed that up with a fantastic, loud, loud as buggery rendition of I Like It Both Ways, which went over very, very big with your knowledgeable French crowd. So as you can see, he has the runs on the board when it comes to the French caper, but it doesn't stop there. This man is the only man I know who has sat down and watched all the Emmanuel films through at one sitting. So as you can see, his work with French... His work in France speaks volumes when it comes to objectivity. Monsieur Roy, France, how good is it? Yes, it's a very good question, isn't it, HG? I, <clears throat> uh, can I just preference my comments, HG, by saying that <clears throat> uh, I love the French people. Yeah. Uh, I, I always have done. I, I, I have no problems with the French people. But uh, if you have a look at what France has given us over the years, and yeah. it's a bit difficult to know where to start, really, but... Uh, I'll bugger it. If we start, say, with uh, Moliere. Uh, Moliere, what did he give us? Uh, he just had a look at Plautus and Terence and wrote it all out in French and called them plays, called them his ideas. If you look at Jean Genet and uh, call oh, that art, yes. slash your wrist sort of gear. Mm. Yeah, brilliant bit of gear. Love that. Uh, Baudelaire, Hopeless. Gustave Flaubert, uh, high watermark, Madame Bovary, uh, which is, was about a, a woman who just loved the flute a little bit too much. Uh, if we move oh, on to... Uh, over, oh, very, very French, yeah, yes. Very if you look at uh, the, the Citroën, uh, get in, start it up, but wait for 20 minutes until the hydraulics work so you can get going. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, what was it, the, uh, the, the, the Renault. The Renault. Uh, just a rust bucket. Hopeless. If you look at the uh, at French tennis players, you've got Henri Lacan, brilliant, uh, brilliant but erratic and hopeless. You've got uh, Guy, Guy Forge, just a nose and a couple of feet and a tennis racket. You look at, uh, at, at Monsieur Julio's Holiday, <laughs> funniest film ever made. Ye or ye or just a door moving it out. That was out and that was the funniest gag in the whole bloody film. Uh, if we move on to the Arc of Triomphe, just a couple of bricks. Uh, the Le Tower Eiffel, uh, just, a, just a couple of bloody bits of bars. Nowhere near as good as the Opera House or, or, the, or the bloody Harbour Bridge for mine. It's just the Harbour Bridge stuck upwards. <laughs> you look at the Louvre, that lordy, loony little bit of gear. Bridget Bardo from Loon to Loon. That's her career. Um, uh, well, it is easy. It is easy, as I said, to let uh, our get the better of well, you this time. At this time of, well, uh, now I've got to move on to the war. Well, World War One. Don't get me started. Marcel Marceau's wall from all of them. <laughs> Hands up, style. World War Two. Bloody the same. <laughs> Hopeless. Did nothing. Lay back. Come on in, Germany. Come on in, Australians. Where are you, sir? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I've had it. I've had it with the French. <laughs> the high water mark with your French is your B-Day. <laughs> oh, yeah, a bit of water on a brown bot. <laughs> but they have provide us with this meal here tonight, oh, yes. the French Embassy. Oh, yes, We're right refusing right. to eat this. Yes. But just have a look at the gear they've thrown at us, Roy. Escargot. <clears throat> yeah. No you, go. You bloody beauty, look at that. Snail. Here's how we have our coffee in a big bloody stupid bowl like that. You get it everywhere, you have a bit of a croissant, you dip it in, off you go. You got your champagne here, which is a good B-Day cleaner, which is... 
just pour it in, you don't need a brush. Uh, <laughs> this is your Jean Pierre and Co. Champagne, hopeless. French have given us nothing. France has given us nothing. Buckley's to the power of less. Thank you very much. But Roy, uh, there is there is yeah, marvellous people. Oh well, they, you couldn't meet nicer people. Well, you couldn't meet nicer people. No. I, I know when you went over there, you know a lot of people just welcoming you into your home to get you to perform in their lounge rooms. It was that good. People were prepared to have a look at you taking down your trousers throughout the whole length and breadth of the country, Marseille to Paris to Bordeaux to San Sebastian to Biarritz, wherever Roy went. He was fated as a king. Now, uh, look, you can do something about this. And uh, today, in most papers in Australia, were certain fax numbers. Sure. The fax numbers were those of Jacques Chirac, mm. the new president. I'd love to see Australia send Jacques Chirac's fax machine down the Brasco by <laughs> overuse. And I can give you a few ideas of the sort of message that I think all Australians should be sending to France to sweet. Uh, that is, the bloke, uh, let's face it, understands a few words of French and he understands a few words of English. And so if you cobble together, a, uh, you know, a sentence or a message right. out of the following phrases, I think you'll hit the nail pretty well on the head protest-wise. He understands the term soisonne. Mm -hmm. He understands get a dog. He understands boot up the date. He understands hier a dieu. And with those in a certain order, I think you can get the message across and send a bloody big bomb to Paris where the bloody thing should be let off in the first place. No, I agree with you, mate. Oh, let's face it. Oh, no. oh, no. Well, let's face it, there's nothing worth saving over there. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I think whatever you're going over there, if you're stupid enough to go there as a tourist, uh, just butt buttonhole someone, say good day, or as I do, good day, I'm Roy. Uh, <laughs> it means king in your language. <laughs> and I'm from Australia. Uh, did you vote for Jacques Chirac? And if they say we, oui, you simply pants them, uh, <laughs> put a cracker in, pass on, up the date, <laughs> and a little bit of champagne over the head, uh, in with a knee, uh, grab the crotch, give it a bit of a squeeze, say thank you very much for all you've done for the Pacific, clown! Um, and I think they understand. Yes, indeed, and that's the... Because they're not a stupid people. No, that's right. <laughs> they do get the message, and, and I think that would represent the high watermark in French-Australian relationships over the last 200 years. Oh, I'd agree with that. Uh, now, uh, let's... The...